Chaz, we're back on the grit. It's December 17th. Got a real Iron Man streak going on here. We do. We are back on the same day that the Pipe Masters is back. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I don't know what to believe anymore. It's just all wildness. It's like Christmas morning. It really is. Uh, how crazy is it, though, that the, the biggest news story went down the day of, maybe, that we published, or the day after, very shortly after we published, and the story's already over. They're yeah. already running the event again, and we didn't even get to comment about COVID, all the downtime and the all. COVID cancellation. I mean, that is what we will talk about today, but by the time we publish this, there'll be a bunch of surfing that's completed at Pipe, and that'll be the news story. Ethan Ewing and Julian Wilson just went through. They made it through heat? They, they, I guess some guy got hurt. The guy who was in their heat with them got oh, hurt really? yesterday at Pipe, so they got, yeah. Who's the guy? Uh, Miguel something. Miguel Pupo? No. Miguel Tudela? Yeah. Oh, he was from the trials. Yes. Oh, bummer, dude. Yeah, bummer. Um, all right, I'm going to turn the event on so we can kind of comment along the way. Is it on your phone? It's on my phone. It's on um, Julian Wilson needed the buy, by the way. He did. Ethan Ewing right there with him. But look at this. Professional Ethan. surfing. Did How long did that week feel between COVID cancellation and today? Exhaustive. Super long. It's felt like a very long week. You know why? Because we cared. And we didn't have updates. It's true. We were sitting like with bated breath. If you're holding your breath, it feels, one minute feels like 10, right? The cone of silence. So we got bamboozled yet again by the WSL. That's the headline for today. I mean, how crazy is it though? I, don't, I do not understand. I do not understand how there's not a daily update on at least we are working. You know, we're taking these boxes. These are the things they're asking us to do. Like none of that stuff is proprietary. It's not like they're kicking Hawaii under the bus somehow. Like they're working, clearly they were working through their protocols. The fact that they could not take four minutes and update fans once a day about, hey, this is where we're at. We're still working through these things. We have everybody isolated. I mean, the NBA does that. The yeah. When there's cancellations in college football or whatever, the fans have a full update of why, when, where, how, et cetera. But uh, I don't, I don't understand. Week. I have no idea what the policy would have been. Why not to? What, I mean, what the argument would have been. Like how in the world what, did Hawaii say, Sh we don't want anybody to know that there is... I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense. There's, there's no reason not to bring fans along on the journey. Completely agree. And it would stimulate more news. I mean, obviously them not talking about it uh, still stimulated news stories. However... I mean, like mocking news stories. Exactly. I mean, it was only... Yeah. Everybody else was quiet on it. It was just beach... It became the beach grit funny thing to do, right? I, is yeah. Is breaking every day with nothing. Exactly. I could see, though... Like they did, they used to do um, every day of the waiting period of an event, they would have the morning show, whether or not they were going to run the comp and there'd be, you know, an explanation of what's happening with the swell. Maybe they would do a couple of pieces, profile pieces of surfers or whatever. Something similar to that, but shorter. That is, like you said, four minutes of just updating on the status of things. That would at least give, keep talking about the WSL. Keep talking, the whole business should be, keep us in the news headlines and keep people talking about it. Well, and also where they would control the narrative. Exactly. Like they, they let me control the narrative. I got to publish rumors. I got to say whatever I wanted to the point where yesterday it got stuck up in Australia. The, yeah. the headline of mainstream Australian surf news, like on <clears throat> news.com.au, okay. it's all, it's like one of those, uh, whatever aggregator things. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, news.com or whatever, it, but it was everywhere. And, and it was, it, mainstream, was mainstream main, news. it was a mainstream news in Australia, calling it the cone of silence. Uh, and quoting you directly. Yeah, which right. is, so they let me have the narrative. Great, I'll take the narrative. But how silly, I only took the narrative because they weren't giving anything. And I was, I was trying to get stuff out from the people I know. And I was, was crickets. I mean, I feel like I've probably burned my last bridge with the WSL. It's probably just pure frustration at this point. But as so, yeah, I got I got nothing from them. Did they at least reply to your no inquiry? Okay. No. <laughs> See, because I reached out to somebody as well, and uh, he replied and said, "Hey, I'll check with Eric. I'll check with Elo, and I'll get back to you." And then he never got back to me. Yeah, which I presume then means Elo was like, "No, thanks." But it also made me think that there wasn't a mandate. The fact that he even said, "Hey, let me look into it for you," makes me think 
there wasn't a mandate on day one saying don't talk to press. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I think like all things WSL, it was just a straight up, it was just, they, they flubbed it. Mm -hmm. They messed up again on any kind of messaging, on any kind of storytelling, on any kind of narrative arc of this right. thing right, right. and just straight up blew it. We'll get fully into it. Um, Yagadora, all this stuff. But before we do, we are at album. If it's tinny, if the audio is tinny in here, it is because the room has been emptied. Album is moving. So we're in San Clemente at Album Surfboards. They're moving into the building next door uh, where they have a podcast studio built out for us. Very, I can't believe. It's the nicest gift anyone's given. Didn't even ask for it. No. Amazing. Get a studio. I know, it's crazy. It's a... Um, Formerly Jed Knoll's space, I think it was a yoga studio studio in between Jed's and albums, but Jed Knoll has a shaping bay or had a shaping bay in the space. So it's like a glass walled fishbowl. And uh, now there'll be sofas in there, some padding on the wall, so it won't have this echo tinniness. And if you ever are an album surfboards on the day that we're recording as a shopper, customer, you can watch the podcast. Come on and say hello. How amazing is that? You could be on the podcast. That's true. I don't mind calling somebody in. Heck no. Just come right on in. Um, with every album purchase. Yeah. Gives you, entitles you to 60 seconds. Say whatever you want. Uh, I got a Twinsman last week from Matt. Yeah. So I'm going to be riding that over the next month or two so we can discuss that. It's what, the round what, tail. What's your dims? Six feet. By something, by something. Okay. I think it's two and a half. Okay. And 20 and a quarter, maybe 20 and a half. Exciting. Um, but is yours a swallowtail or a fish? Mine is swallow. Swallowtail. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is like a, uh, I don't know what to call it. It's that diamond kind of. Oh, it is? It's like that. Is that a bat wing? Yeah, bat has, no, the bat. Um, or bat, I mean. It's not a bat. It's the, yeah, the tail. Yeah, diamond tail. But it's, yeah, I guess so. Diamond tail. Is that what it's called? I guess. Yeah, it's great. Um, the way that you're drawing it out doesn't look like a diamond. Is the bottom, the very bottom edge flat? Mm. Or it comes to a point? The very bottom edge is flat, I think. Interesting. I, I think it goes dink, 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 dink. You know, I'm, So it has hard angles. Yeah, hard angles. Interesting. Four okay. hard angles. Sorry, I don't sorry for the one. listener. Uh, for the listeners drawing in the air. Mine is a rounded pen yeah. with the little wings on it. What do you feel about the rounded pen? Oh, maybe that's what mine is too. You know, I'm real confused. Uh, I feel good about the rounded pen. I like rounded pens. So here, my thought on this board before I write it is, um, I used to think of fish as being for small crappy waves. Yeah. Just like you used to think of mid-lengths. Yes. And this, you watch Josh Kerr write it in like pumping surf and endo and drawing big lines and it's got plenty of hold and obviously the fins are really really big and they're set real far back and even the volume distribution on it it's makes me think like i want to actually ride this in juicy surf or like you know head high surf or whatever the revelation on fishes for me came at surf ranch where i've said once and said twice probably on the show the people who were ripping the hardest at surf ranch were for press surf media day were on fishes really yeah now, is it fishes or just fish? Is there a plural version of fish? I'm going to go with fishes. I interviewed uh, Andrew Kidman. I posted it this week, and he was saying fishes nonstop. Yeah. I, fishes. Like, I like fishes. Okay. But what's proper? I think, uh, I think fish is one of those words that has been pluralized enough where now the pluralization of it is also proper English. Okay. It is a proper bastardization that has been... Yeah, accepted by Merriam-Webster and those who accept. Adopted. Adopted in. Okay. Yep, grandfathered. So, so fishes, fishes work best at Surf Ranch. Yeah, fishes worked best on, of course, on the forehand. I think a fish on the backhand is a, is a rough one. And I don't recall people, oh, that's not true. Vaughn Blakey did the sickest little layback tube stall thing on his on his. On his fish. You can go straight on a twin fin backside. It's yeah. just hard to do turns. Yeah. Um, what was Cote riding? Cote was on a fish, I, th I, I do believe. Wow. I think he's, yeah. Was Cote, he, Cote might not have been. Pete Terrace was on a fish. Pete Terrace ripped. Uh, and Vaughn, I suppose, yeah. Cote ripped the most, but Vaughn yeah. was the, was the, yeah, the class act. Uh, 
Do you watch Pete Terrace's wine reviews on Instagram? No, but I'm going to now. Are They're they pretty great? Good. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty good. His whole gimmick, and he does it in his stories, his whole gimmick is... Um, they got to be under 10 bucks. Oh, sweet. And they're mainly from Trader Joe's. So he wore wine reviews under 10 bucks, wine, under 10 buck wines. Yep. Pete yep. Harris, for those who don't know, is the greatest surf photo editor who ever did live. Uh, was photo surf editor for years and years at Transworld and then surfing. And I think he was, and then surfer. After surfing closed, he got bumped over to surfer, but it wasn't in the photo editor role, was it? Yeah, I think he, I mean, I think he had an expanded role. Yeah, but video production. Something. But uh, any anyhow, guess what Pete Terrace does now? I was just going to ask. Pete Terrace. Wine reviews. And best job ever, works for uh, one of those companies that makes the guns that shoots bugs with salt. Have you seen those? I saw him posting them on Instagram. I just thought he got it as a gift. Yeah, no. That is, that's where Pete Terrace is now. Pete Terrace is killing bugs with salt. Doing media stuff for him? Must or? be. Yeah. Wow. Uh, epic. Epic job. Interesting. I mean, I, who doesn't want to shoot bugs with salt? It's a genius idea. I know. I don't have one, but I want one. We should... Uh, well, let's get him as a sponsor on the show. Yeah. Um, I think... It, I, what would happen if you shot somebody with it? Would it do any damage at all? I would imagine it would have to, if it's enough power to kill a bug, I would imagine it would sting slightly. The idea is it's like a shotgun, right? Yeah. So it's a blast of pellets, essentially. Yeah. But if it, I mean, it doesn't take much to kill a bug. No, but I think if it hits your eye or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. it might be uncomfortable. I can't imagine it would, it would puncture your skin. No, definitely not. But yeah. I kind of want to get one. I'm for sure. Just to like shoot friends with, yeah. essentially. I, yeah. I mean... Best job ever. Okay. Pete Harris. I like it. Pete. Yeah. Pete moving up in the world. Yep. Um, who knew that you were friends with Scott Kahn? Yeah. I'm good friends with Scott Kahn. <laughs> yeah. Little did I know. Yeah. My bro. Why you try to keep me away from all your other friends? I know. I want to be I, hanging out with Scott. We can, we can have Scott on the show, to this show too. Scott was on Dirty Water yeah. last week. Yep. Um, Scott Kahn, heralded American actor, son what? of John, uh, James. James Kahn. Ocean's Eleven, his Y Five O. His mom was also one of uh, Elvis's girlfriends. Really? Yeah. How about that? So he had basically Elvis as a stepdad and James Caan as a real dad. Wait, dated Elvis obviously before she met James? I think I don't know actually. The, the timeline would have to be. Yeah, probably before. So James was like, "Holy cow, you've been with Elvis?" Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is that a turn on or a turn off? I mean, turn on? Are you kidding? Yeah, but Elvis has been around. He was dating a child. He married a child. He did totally marry a child, which would make it even better. I don't know. I don't know if I want association with that. Eskimo brothers with Elvis with, Presley. With a full on. Yeah. How old was, how old was. Uh, Lisa. Uh, not Lisa. Was his, his yeah. wife? Lisa's Pr daughter. Priscilla. 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 Priscilla yeah. yeah. Priscilla uh, was. I think she was 15. 15 and a half. It wasn't like, that. like she was 17. No, 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 no. It no. was like, like definite. Yeah. And it was the father and the mother being yeah. like signing off on it. And like, in, yeah, go away. Yeah. And they were in Germany. Oh, is that what it was? I mean, the, the, her dad was a, uh, yeah, military. So they were in Bad Neuheim. I jumped off the train in Bad Neuheim in Germany just to be in Elvis's hometown. Literally jumped off like a moving train? Yeah. I mean, I was on the train and it was doing a stopping in Bad Neuheim. My brother and I did it. I think we went specifically to go to Bad Newheim, then ran around for a minute just to be, that's where Elvis was stationed. Um, so whenever they jump off a train, a moving train in the movies, I always feel like it's not that dangerous. It's pretty dangerous. The train's not ever going that fast, but they act all dramatic. And I feel like I could, I could take that role. Yeah. Have you, have you jumped off a moving train before? No. It's a lot more, there's something odd about it. There's something about the uh, mass of the train that even though it's not moving that fast, like your first couple jumps off a train, off a moving train, I feel will be stumbly and weird. Uh, the thing is nobody tries to run. Yeah. They try to hit the ground and roll. Yeah. I want to hit the ground and keep running forward. Just the exact That's the trick. The exact pace. Of well, the train. you don't you don't stand and then jump off the train. You gotta get a running start, land and then continue running. Okay. And I think I could do it. Maintain the momentum of the Pace of the train. We should, we should go try. I think we should. Yeah. There's going to be a video segment for the podcast. Uh, my, the greatest moment this week in podcast was Scott Kahn giving you fighting advice for what you should have done when you got slapped by Ashton. It was really good. You even trying to explain to him the scenario or the dynamic in the scenario was already funny. Yeah. And then him being like, yeah, the thing with jujitsu is you want to control the distance. You weren't really far enough. 
to prevent him from hitting you, but you weren't close enough to tie him up. You were like right in punching distance. <laughs> so I don't know what to really tell you. It was pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was good. good. Derek sent him the video before we had the chat. So he, he got to have full view of the of your famous movie. I, I'm thrilled that yeah. Scott Kahn has, has watched you, your, my greatest work. Your work, yep. Did he know, though, that I was doing it? Like, does he, was he like, oh, this is the David Scales of the podcast world? I'm, I need to tell, I need to go back and tell him. Say, hey, Scott Kahn, just FYI. Yeah, then these, I will expect to get an email from him the, praising my work. A tour, the cinematographer there was none other than. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, are you going to give Stab $48? Ooh, the other big story. So many big stories. Um, no, I'm not. Uh, but I truly do wish them all the best. Um, I don't know. Is it 48 bucks? It's not 48 bucks. It's If you uh, buy the year in advance. The year in advance is 72. The month to month. Yeah, because it's. Maybe they said save 48 bucks then. Exactly. Because I did the math. It was, I think it's 5.99. No, it's 10 bucks. 10, 10 bucks, bucks if you do it month. But if you buy the year, gotcha. I think it's 5.99. It's, it, anyway, I did the math in front of the computer. And gotcha. it was $72 for the year. So that, that must be it. It must have been save 48 bucks yeah. if you buy a year in advance. Yeah. So uh, you're not going to give them 80 bucks. No. I mean, I, there's nothing that I care to see there. Uh, well, you want to stay current on Surf News, right? Uh, They're going to be doing journalism. Oh, they are. Yeah. I forgot about that. So you're not going to be up to date. That's a real bummer. Dave uh, Prodan wrote a piece for him today. Dave Prodan wrote a piece for Stacy the, the, oh, did you pay your 48 bucks? No. I mean, you say I'm going 48 to. Bucks? I'm you're going, going to. Uh, just, I was thinking about getting you one for Christmas. That's a gr- I mean, I don't know that I would use it. That's, that was the problem. I was like, I'm down to do it just for the joke. Yeah. It's an $80 joke, but only if you'll use it. Yeah. I don't think I would. What did Dave Prodan have to write? Let's see. I mean, so my whole theory my working theory here is this is the prenuptial agreement before WSL fully subsumes Stab, mm. consumes Stab. Uh, and yeah, Prodan writing for it furthers that. I know people shake their head when I, when I roll this theory, but it's the one that makes the most sense to me. Explain what it is. So here's what I think. The WSL has been toying with a subscription, going subscription, going paywall, all this stuff for years now, right? I mean, with char- they they've yeah i mean they've been poking this thing for a minute uh i think so they say to stab hey you do it uh we'll roll you in to wsl and then we'll do it uh we'll go subscription too why would they if they had a business plan and a strategy why would they tell the company that they're hoping to acquire to do that in advance and then we will acquire you because i wonder what would the what would that benefit them at all? Because they would if, generally keep their cards close to their vest. But I don't think they're going to acquire. I mean, I don't think Stab is worth very much. Uh, so I think what they would do, though, is just roll it all into one and have kind of a rev share. Like pay salaries. WSL now pays everybody's salaries. Sam, the owner, or whoever has an ownership stake, gets an ownership stake, not in the WSL, but sort of retains their ownership of Stab at some level. WSL owns a percentage then too, et cetera. I don't buy it. That's what I think. I think that, and I think that, uh, I'm not saying that couldn't happen. I just don't think that's the strategy here. I mean, I don't know that they're per the WSL's wackiness. I don't know that there is necessarily a strategy. I think this is after the fact, this is what's going, that's what's going to be. Yeah. In the rear view, we'll be able to say, Oh, that's what happened. And I think that stab is softening, the consumer up for subscribing, right? WSL is seeing how many people will actually subscribe to something. Yeah. Like all that is valuable information. I love that stab, I guess they're having glitches with their new uh, website. Yeah. Um, and claim that it's because of the overwhelming volume of uh, <laughs> volume yeah. of traffic, which <laughs> I don't know that anybody has gone to a subscription paywall model and all of a sudden just, Boom, through the rough. We just can't keep up with how many people want to pay. So let's unpack the numbers a little bit. You and I kind of understand how big the surf audience is. Yeah. You working in print previously, running a website, me doing the podcast thing, and also setting up a subscription service a month ago, just before Stab, and seeing kind of what the conversion rates are. And by the way, we had a donation platform set up for a couple of years, so I know what that conversion was. 
of number of listeners versus number of people who actually subscribe. Um, Stab said that the first 5,000 subscribers get a free month, uh, courtesy of Vans. Vans will cover the cost. So they do still have advertisers in addition to the subscription model. Um, I'd be surprised if they got 5,000 total. Are you kidding? 5,000 dream on 5,000. Exactly. Yeah, they'll yeah. get, I mean, I think they'll get, I don't want to speculate too oddly, but I, they, if they had 1,000, they would be extremely lucky. Yeah. In the first, so, the first at least while. So um, a listener DM'd me and he was like, you know, they have, I think, 3 million Instagram followers is what he said. Is that, does that sound right? No. Nope. We can look it up right now. Maybe it's 1 million. I think it's, I think it's just around one. What do you got? Mm, checking out right now. I'll cut the dead air. Dead air. Stab has 965,000. Okay, so let's say a million. Just, just shy of a mil. So he goes, I'd say if they have a million Instagram followers, they can convert 10% of that and they can have 100,000 you know, uh, subscribers. I was like, dude, are you tripping? Ten- First of all, Instagram followers are not website followers. Yep. That's an entirely different metric. And second of all, there's no chance you convert 10%. 10% isn't, even for the most successful company, that would not ever happen, you know? <laughs> yeah. That is so far off. I'm like, more like 1%. I mean, 1%, one to two. If, they're, if they're crazy lucky, yeah. I think. I and mean, that's of actual loyalists that follow the website. That's what you would be basing the 1% on, not on Instagram followers. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Uh, you know what website traffic is? Yeah. What are, What is their website traffic or what is your guys is? And then how many would 1% of that be? I mean, we're, we bounce around in the 1.5 to 1.8 million uniques a month. I think Stab hits around 300,000 uniques a month if they're lucky. And so, I mean, that's the thing. Is they, so 3,000. 3,000 if they're, if they're converting 1%. If they convert 1%, they'd have 3,000 subscribers yep. at 10 bucks a month. So. I mean, who knows? Like, yeah. again. I 30, wish 30,000 bucks of revenue a month. It totally sounds r- rude to wish them the best, but I do. But I just. Why is it rude to wish them the best? I mean, it's, it sounds rude. It sounds like I'm being facetious oh, just because I. Disingenuous. Kick, yeah, disingenuous. No, I don't think so. But. I wish them the best too. Yeah. but I, honestly, I like. The electric acid surfboard test, the stab in the dark, all that stuff I love and I find value in and um, I think they're well done. So we can kind of unpack this story a little bit for what the idea is and what they're um, purporting that they're going to invest the money into. Um, One thing that I like is that it seems they've delineated the roles a little bit better. I feel like for the last few years or maybe since Ashton took over as editor and they went, they eliminated the print. With print, there was probably really defined roles. Since they eliminated the print, Ashton took over. They moved to America. It seemed like they have five core people who each kind of wear multiple hats. And it just felt like there wasn't enough enough definition. Like they, there was a couple of properties like Stab in the Dark, and it was being constantly redefined or improved upon. And there was just kind of um, a bit of gray area. It seems like now they're hire a print or a editor in chief to manage all the writing. Ashton seems to be moving over to the video role. Michael Ciamarella covers contests and surfboard reviews. I think that is all very small, smart delineating those roles. And, um, I'm not sure exactly what the difference will be between the premium model versus the free. Like, I don't know what I think there's from what I understood, there's basically nothing. I mean, there's like, Nothing for the free version? There's something, but it's like the, the real, like whatever the intern or whatever writes. Like, right. I mean, that stinking intern. It's really not a not a very funny person. No, <laughs> not not great stuff. I don't even want to throw shade because it's like not even worth. <laughs> no. It's no. bad. Yeah. It's really bad. <laughs> um, but the subscription move is a long time coming. And so I think if the WSL implements it, it's because it's a long time coming. I don't think it was a test run through stab, but it's obvious right after the surf line gets the $30 million cash infusion from a private equity group that specifically invests in subscription model businesses with loyal following, you'd have to be a dumbass to not want to chase down that model. Uh Oh, beach, right? beach grid ain't chasing it down. <laughs> 
Beach Grid is free. Outrageous and contagious. Well, what about that? How do you feel about them throwing a little bit of shade at you in their uh, oh, of course, in Sam's? I mean, I I think I think that they never under, They never got the joke. I think they're all fully butthurt. Everyone at Stab Ashton. I think Mikey Cimarella is not so much, but I think Sam and Ashton and everybody really has hurt feelings, and they didn't they didn't think the yellow surf journalism wars that I stoked for the last five years was funny. Um. How'd you feel about them throwing the barb though in their? Oh, I love it. I mean, that's that's our new tagline: is outrageous and contagious. Yeah. Somebody said it might have even been Negatron in the comments on Beach Grit that, um, you know, like it was unnecessary or it showed their character or whatever. And I thought I didn't feel like it was unnecessary at all. I thought it was well deserved. Like that tiny barb coming back at you was such a long time coming and it was actually not that offensive. But I mean, that's the funny, you know, when somebody's just like gets super red in the face and they'd like put up with something, put up with something, put up with something and then finally deliver their coup de gras and it's just so flat and dumb and their voice cracks and they're, they look weird. (laughs) I mean, that's to me what that, that's what, that's what stab is, is like the other thing, here's what I'll say about one more thing while I wish them the best and also continue to kick them in the balls. Uh, I think stab what it really essentially is. I've thought about this. I don't know. I don't know why them going subscription made me made me formalize it. But I feel there was a real condescension for audience in the through the two thousands of yeah. surf brands and surf media. Like I remember even at you know being at surfing and stuff like that, and really like just the audience was just so looked down upon. Uh, Whereas I think stab still completely has that. It's a real disdain for the audience, right? Like we will give you, you know, tent pole production stuff. We'll give you stab in the dark and this, this, and this, and that you audience should feel thankful that this is what we're doing. And even there was something, even in what Sam wrote that long missive that was, you know, we're doing this for you. And now this is real reader supported, blah, 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 blah. But at the same time, I think they've been so entirely dismissive of their audience uh, you know, from cutting comments to, I don't know, there's just a, there's that tone that I think really exists in stab of, it's not about the people it's about them. It's, it, it's like trickle down economics, right? Where they're going to tell you what's cool and let that trickle down into, uh, you know, into the masses. They're going to gift the masses with, with a little cool trickle. Whereas beach grit, I think is built entirely opposite where it's just built from the base, like what, the beach grit person who comes to the side every day, that's the stuff that bubbles up to the top. Trickle down influence yeah. was based on because their advertising was coming from their revenue was coming from brands advertising and they want to influence the kids into what to buy. And so it made sense that that would have been the model kind of, except there was, I think the, the real uh, dismissiveness of yeah. an audience is you don't have to be dismissive of your audience. Where I think that's just baked in with. I think it's baked was baked in with so much surf, and I think it's part of why the surf industry just went went to hell in a handbasket yeah. because there was no look down at the people and saying, "Oh wait, this is where this is the energy of this thing." It's not this cool ethos that we've that we think we have. It's right. not the cool. It's you know, it's down here. It's the it, people. It seemed to make sense. It was right at the time. I think. I don't know. The, the, looking back, it, it it's awkward when I look back at well, how dismissive it is surf awkward. media and the surf brands were for their own fan base. But no, I think it's, I, I hear what you're saying entirely. It is awkward, but I think it was like a, in psychology, like in high school or whatever, if you, the cool kid uh, acts dismissive of whoever else or even like negs the girl, sure. she then wants him more. You know what I mean? So there's just like a human psychology element. I don't think they thought it through. Completely. It was just that. Completely. I, it was like, I'm holier than thou, I'm cooler than you. And then all of a sudden people are attracted to that. Yeah, exactly. But the, I, I And su- it influenced sales. But I suppose that Stab trying to act cool well past its pull-by date. Uh, when you're Matt, Matthew McConaughey. Was, was the awkward part, yeah. I mean, in, it, in Dazed and Confused. Yeah, you can act cool. Stab was had not been Matthew McConaughey in Dazed and Confused for years and yeah. years and years and years. Um, so speaking of Andrew Kidman and speaking of beach grit, kind of the idea, like Kidman doesn't really have financial models in place for 
like his acetone magazine that he's doing now or a lot of the films you know um he's doing them because he loves to do them yeah like like when he made litmus back in the day or this he's beyond litmus is one of the newer films revisiting kind of litmus and it's like I want to focus on Derek Hine. I want to revisit some of these themes. There's no thought about, is there a market for yeah. Derek Hine as a surfer? There's just, this is very interesting to me and I'm going to do it. And I mean, maybe it makes money, maybe it doesn't. I have no idea, but it's not catered towards an end marketing goal. And I think that if I might be presuming too much, but it feels like Beach Grit was founded that way as well. And whether or not it can sustain over the course of a decade remains to be seen. But it felt like, you know, you have um, revenue from writing books or whatever else. Derek, you know, presumably made some money off Stab or whatever. And this needs to make money as a business at some point, but it's not founded with a business model as being kind of the, the main goal here. It's not founded to get rich. It's not founded to... Totally. I mean, I think... And that's a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, we do it because we love it. And of course, you know, it needs to be better as a business and work better as a business. But the whole thing is driven by, I think, just real, yeah, love and passion for the thing. Which is the best way to... You're right. Founding something that way is kind of the best way to make sure that if it is art related, that the art stays kind of true. But figuring out the business model is a uh, necessary part of that art and not compromising the art with the business model that is figured out along the way. And I don't, I, I just, maybe I'm just a big old dreamer, but I don't think those things need to be mutually exclusive. I think there's a I way to so bring, either. I mean, you're the, any audience of anything as your partners and you're, you know, I mean, the, the reason this thing exists, there's a way to all work towards something together, I think, toward a way that makes it, makes whatever the thing is just better, which is at the end, the goal, right? Yeah, which is kind of what I was talking with Andrew about too, is that uh, it's a real resetting. Like, I think this, it was expedited by COVID, but like the industry being shaken up was necessary. Yeah, Like we needed, it got so capitalist and fueled by not even capitalist, but like boardrooms that don't even exist in surfing's, sphere at all yeah like the entity that's running surfer magazine does not know what surfing is doesn't care about surfing they're making decisions for 12 different titles and surfing is just caught up in that decision same thing with the brands being bankrupt and run by private equity it's all taking place in a boardroom so it got so far removed from the beach that it needed to be broken completely in order to reset i'm real curious I was very, and I think I've talked about it on the show, but looking at the packed lineups, right? Like, I mean, it's been so crowded down, especially with runs of Good Surf lately yeah. down in North County, San Diego. Packed though, like packed to the gills, packed like I've never seen it, uh, which was really frustrating to me at the start. I was thinking, come on. But the other day I was out there packed, frustrated too, but thinking, well, I wonder if somehow this, this uh, I don't know, rebirth of surfing or this coming out of the apocalypse if there's kids out here or people out here now who are not elo like weird corp corpo stoked but like i don't know what what kind of energy is going to come out of this many people picking up surfing or will it will people just get mad and start punching each other out i don't know or will they even stick around i mean yeah i don't know i don't know either it's crazy though it is, it, i mean is it packed more packed yes. where you surf Way more. Yeah. Even, I mean, yesterday I was going to go surf and it was so small and walled that I didn't even paddle out. I checked everywhere and didn't even paddle out because the couple of spots that there were little walled closeouts, super packed. It wasn't even, I was like, I can't even imagine myself getting a wave out there. I, I mean, mean I don't even want any of those waves, but I can't even imagine getting one. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it is. is. Honest to goodness which, crazy. Which is actually why I didn't paddle out is if the waves get good, I feel like I can go out and get waves because those people will just get swept down the beach in the current or whatever. But if I got to go sit in a flat lineup, I'll get frustrated. Man, that's the, like I surfed somewhere on one of the good days of swell, uh, where when the sets were kind of consistent, it was okay. But as if there was a lull at all, it packed so tight on the point where it felt like I was in on traffic in the four Oh five, like yeah. just sitting there thinking, 
if a wave comes right now, I don't even have room to spin no. and go. Like, no. I mean, it's I just it's get crazy frustrated time. if somebody paddles and sits next to me. Like, yeah. even if there's no waves coming and they just come and reposition, I just get so annoyed. Yeah. Yeah, and then the frustration takes over. Just boils. Um, all right, so let's kind of get into what happened last week. Uh, basically, the day after, within the day after that we recorded, Eric Logan contracted COVID, announced that he had contracted COVID and that they were going to suspend the pipe masters. Uh, and then they went silent for six days. Not one word. Not even, Friday, an in, not even an Instagram. Nothing. Not Friday until yesterday. Not one word. So we got an email from a listener, Ashley T. And she said, quote, why would a company that pretends to own the digital space in surfing, even though most of their social posts are from other accounts, claim that they are the home of global surfing not keep their own base informed at a time when the sharks are circling and the misman uh, around the mismanagement of the whole thing. There's a real chance for them to draw sympathy from the critics. Just be honest. Tell us what you're going through. You're sick for goodness sakes. Keep us on the hook uh, for the only thing that we care to see the surfing itself in their recent history. They've had a surplus of missed opportunities and screw ups, but the fact that they are going to look back uh, or that we are looking into back channels about the state of their own event for five days might be their worst fumble ever. No matter what side of the COVID discussion the surf fans are on, the handling of this has been a big failure uh, for the competitors and the surf world at large while the surf has been pumping. And then seven hours later, she sent me another email saying, looks like they're back on. <laughs> so this came through last night. <laughs> looks like they're back on, but I still stand by my previous email. And I take full responsibility for shaking up the cosmos and getting things moving. Please keep, keep up the great work. Good job, Ashley. So thanks, Ashley T, for that. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, it was just, I just, it's crazy how bungled it was. Yeah. I mean, A, bungled because, like, there was no even explanation of why... Again, people get COVID, right? And there's been sports leagues running yeah. and people get COVID in them and the leagues do not shut down. Their coaches get it of football teams. The coach can't be on the sidelines for that game. The right. game still plays. Elo, Eric Logan, the CEO who has no reason to be there, uh, as far as I can tell. I mean, other than glad handing. I mean, he, Elo does not run a camera. He does not sit behind a mic. Or does he? I mean, remember, maybe. Remember the Surf Ranch event? How badly that went oh over and goodness. we were like god is elo the one who's printing actually, jerseys at this point totally and pushing record on the camera so maybe he is. maybe he went to hawaii because he needed to screen print he, jerseys i mean if he's there screen printing jerseys then great then he is a necessary part of the of the production team otherwise okay so fine why is he there but okay he's there he gets covid uh i don't understand why they didn't obviously who did he come in contact with and you got to isolate them too and i mean did he just did Elo come in contact with every single person? Like, I don't understand how they couldn't have run, kept running the event while exactly. isolating him. Uh, yeah. Um, and the four other people who apparently had Apparently, the answer to that is practical, and it is that they have a film permit, and part of what's built into that contract is that if anybody on the film crew or set contracts COVID... The entire production's done. Until everybody tests negative, or until everybody else tests negative, or something like that. So they needed a... I, but that would take that would take two days, exactly. isn't? I mean, yeah, that's like I it, just don't understand why they kept it shut down. Obviously, there was Elo wrote another long thing today. Man, the way he uses personal pro like the eyes and stuff like that in there, it really is reads oddly narcissistic. Uh, but anyway, he said you know there was a like a mountain of work they had to do to get it back going and blah blah blah. I understand. Okay, great. W was all of that top secret? Like, could you not have said each day, hey, we're, we're waiting for this many days because we got to test this many surfers. You know, we're really trying to work it out with this, that, and the other thing. I mean, I just, I don't understand what would be secret or what would be necessarily or necessitate secrecy about, about the proceedings to yeah. their own fan base who are sitting there watching pipe pump on Surfline or where, wherever. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand how they didn't flick on the camera and just broadcast free surfs. Um, it feels like there's nobody in the PR position. Like there should, if you're going to send as 
many people as they sent to Hawaii, I feel like it's almost a foregone conclusion that there will be somebody that tests positive at some point. For sure. So there should have been a contingency plan, or maybe there was a contingency plan. You had, I mean, you literally had nine months to work out that contingency. You knew you were going to start at some point in COVID. You had nine months to figure out the contingency. And in that contingency, it should have been like you said, the NFL is doing this where, okay, that person goes and isolates, but what is the messaging that goes out? The fact that they went silent makes me feel like there was no contingency plan. Because again, foregone, you have to map out worst case scenarios ass- of us moving this tour to Hawaii. You assume. I mean, you to- have to assume somebody's going to contract it. And it's not the end of the world if somebody contracts, but what is the messaging that we give to the people? And it turns out it's bad PR that the CEO got it. I mean, it's really, really not to laugh too hard, but it's very funny. <laughs> You know, with the Trump presidency, how it just went from like offensive to then it got to the point where it was comedic and like slapstick. And then it got to the point where it was like, it's not even funny anymore. Yeah. It's like farcical. You yeah. cannot script this. Yeah. That's kind of the direction that this has been going. And you're right. The CEO getting it and having to shut down competition when the waves are pumping, it's beyond funny. I didn't understand, truthfully, uh, why there was no zero shame in any of Elo's messaging about it. If I contracted COVID and shut an entire thing down, I would be so, I would be, my head would be hung. I would profoundly apologize. I would say, you know, I obviously like this, I didn't want to get this thing. I was as careful. I have no doubt that Eric Logan was as careful as could be, right? I have no doubt that he was practicing social distancing and washing his hands and hand sanitizing and masking up and whatever, you know, all, I'm sure he wasn't out there being, he, Eric Logan does not strike me as a, like a real rebel when, yeah. when it comes to that stuff. So we'll assume, but still like, obviously it's not his fault that he contracted COVID, but it is his fault that the whole thing got shut down. And yeah. like, there should have been some amount of at least an apology. Like imagine all the surfers who were there who, a, not getting to surf their heats, possibly Crazy. possibly getting canceled all the way. I mean, the fact that they're running uh, is a small miracle, right? Yeah, I mean, this, that was not a foregone conclusion that they... So he almost broke this entire thing. Yeah. Uh, and not one... Boy, I am sorry. Right. Well, I think uh, I would never have gone. If I was in his position knowing that that is a potential thing that could happen, I wouldn't have gone. Because the risk of him getting it and taking the blame, essentially, for shutting down the tour is too big of a risk. I mean, and I just don't... Hire somebody else to print the jerseys. I mean, they can't. don't have money. It's crazy. It really is crazy. uh, But I also don't understand why the... uh, I mean, again, you had nine months to figure this thing out. Why are the judges there? All the judges do is watch. They're not allowed to watch the actual surfing. They have to watch the screen because right. that's they all have to have the same view. As far as I understand, I think they're not allowed to look out right. and make judgments based on what they see. They have to base. So why weren't the judges in Santa Monica? You know, I mean, you could have cut the staff down. Yeah. Even by, I mean, I don't know. It's all crazy down. But again. Uh, seven days or six days, six days of silence. Six days of silence was a huge mistake. I kind of wonder um, if this will even be remembered. Like there's going to be highlights from day one. There's gonna, highlights from today. I'm watching it. Wade Carmichael just got a good one. Ryan Callanan won his heat, by the way. Good. You'll be happy about that. Favorite surfer. Um, and it's kind of like the if we're using Trump as the analogy, the Rose Garden thing. We don't even remember that. Like there were so many different kind of debacles and fumbles and that in five years from now, you'll say the term Rose Garden. Nobody will remember what that was. That's true. That's true. And so I wonder if this just kind of gets swept under the rug, except I have to wonder, and there's a huge question mark here about how 2021 proceeds after this. Well, I mean, if... Like, I think that this is not well, a success. No, the debacle of this will precede the World Surf League to their next stop, which is Santa Cruz, right? Actually, or the sunset. So sunset will be January 19th. So we have about a month until sunset, but everybody's in Hawaii. Presumably they'll stay in Hawaii. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll go home for Christmas. It's weird, isn't it? Well, that's why Ace Buckins stayed home. Yeah. By the way, no word on Owen Wright or why he's 
didn't show up. I mean, it's crazy town. Can you imagine a league that that is this? I mean, I've never, I don't follow tons of other sports, but follow enough to know that the World Surf League is unique in their ability to, like, I mean, they clearly don't hate their fan, but they act like they hate their fans. Yeah. They act like they, you don't get to see anything except for, or learn anything or know anything. You are lucky to watch the broadcast. Just shut your mouth and watch the broadcast. It goes back to, as we like discuss all these little branches of what they've done, I think it all falls under a heading that we've been identifying for a year now, which is a lack of leadership. I mean, it's like crazy. A, a real, if there was a real pointed leadership, it would answer a lot of those questions, but I think it is. I don't think there's a disdain for the customer. I don't think that there's a strong strategy about a cone of silence. I think there's a lack of all of those things. Do you, there's no real feeling about the audience. There's no real feeling about, like, they don't have a plan in place. Do you think that they that they believe their audience is their Instagram audience, is the people who comment beautiful, pray, praying hands, you know, you're the best, love you, love you, love you on, I mean... Because the Instagram feed is usually part of the wall of positive noise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I don't know. Like, I wonder if you're sitting there. Like, so I was, uh, when Stab went um, subscription, uh, they announced on Instagram too. And I was flicking through their comments. And they were, you know, 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 11 or 19 out of 20 were totally positive, right? You guys are the best. You make the best content love this, can't wait to subscribe, can't wait to give you my money, all that, where I'm thinking, okay, that's all fine and good, but is that, is that really representative of yeah. Stab's audience? Like how many I of them are praying hands emojis, love well, you guys for your work, can't wait to give you money? It is because the average audience just has a general interest. They don't care as much as you and I. The fact that you and I are like this intense and care about the WSL <laughs> is an anomaly. Nobody cares about the WSL that much. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, is that true? Yeah. But people, okay, let's talk about other leagues real quick though. People love the UFC, right? Yeah. They care about the UFC. Yeah. And they care about the fighters and they also care about the league. People love who love basketball, you know, know They're about- buying the jerseys and wearing them to family get togethers. And know about the NBA in general yeah. too, right? Like they're, they know that, that uh, who the commissioner is. They know, maybe not to this- level that we fixate on the WSL? Yeah, I don't know. I think um, the vast majority of people following the WSL's Instagram are just generalists who like the pretty images and like, you know. But does but do the WSL go in there and say, where we are engaging with our fans. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think so. Engagement about, you know, the the word the buzzword engagement i'm sure eric logan loves to use engagement or love to use it when it was buzzy uh do you think they're how do they think they're engaging though i'm not sure because they're they i mean well via instagram i don't know let's talk about proceeding into 2021 yeah after this event like I mean, if this do, was do, a test but do they hope that do they hope that the vaccine is at least widely distributed enough where by the time they get, because Australia is going to be the tough one, right? I mean, I think they'll, so let's, they'll get into America, no problem. February 2nd to America. America. Australia would be uh, April. April 1st is the first day of the Bells waiting period. And, um, so, but and then they got Margaret two weeks later, Gold Coast two weeks later. So they'll be in Australia for a month. So that I would imagine that's the, the I, watching the strategy play out of just total random fly by seat of the pants in Hawaii. They're just hoping that the curve has flattened, whatever, whatever, by Australia. That's all they're doing. They're not planning for it okay. in one way or the other. They're just hoping, hoping beyond hope that it's cool by the time they're going to Australia. I was thinking Corona Open at J Bay. It's June 25th. Okay. Actually, Corona uh, event, Oi Rio Pro presented by Corona. How ironic is it that this is all presented by Corona? Very funny. And that ELO contracts coronavirus. Very in a tw world tour funny. that is ma majorly sponsored by Corona. <laughs> I mean, again, you can't script this. It's crazy, right? So June 8th or June 11th in Brazil, June 25th in South Africa. Yeah. Like there's a couple of tight squeezes along the way that don't allow for two weeks of quarantine. Yep. 
You know, I would argue for everybody uh, who is competing at Sunset on January 19th, fly to California the day that you lose and lock down. Like if you want, honestly, there's going to be competitors who get blocked from travel throughout the year and aren't able to surf events and accumulate points. So if you're a low, if you're Wade Carmichael, just show up two weeks early everywhere and get into the event. And win. And, yeah, You'll you can win a world next. title just by showing up this year. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I, but I'd really, truly, I'm sure they have plans somewhere they talked about. They're not that you think, I mean, they must have at some point, but I don't know. Dude. Sure. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So, um, let's have a conversation about patient zero. Yes. I presume Elo did not have coronavirus when he showed up in Hawaii. He, he I mean, he, he may have, I think, yeah. I mean, you I gotta get tested a bunch, I guess. And I would imagine like they showed a bunch of the testing was that was taking place at the event. Like everybody every day had to get multiple tests or whatever. Um, so presumably he didn't have it on day one or day two and then found out on day three. So let's presume he got it on island. Yes. Who is patient zero? Yago Dora took some of the blame because he actually tested positive before flying over. He had to quarantine, I believe. Was it in Texas? He did something? in Texas for like nine days or something. Nine or 10 days in Texas. And then said... Uh, that he got an exemption from the Hawaiian government, thereby allowing him to bypass. And by the way, the WSL had helped him receive an extent or an exemption from the Hawaiian government by allowing him to bypass and allowing him to bypass the state's 14 day quarantine for arrivals who can't show proof of the negative COVID-19 test three days before their flight. So he was testing positive even after he did that quarantine, but apparently there's dead COVID cells in your blood that can, trigger the test to be positive and so that was probably triggering it because he didn't have symptoms and he had quarantined and all that sort of stuff but he said that the wsl helped him get the approval he had since deleted that post once eric logan tested positive and um after the deletion and after the story showed up on beach grit and everywhere else he basically came back out of hiding and said well, hey what he said well i mean he basically said it wasn't me wasn't me. Yeah. He said, I was not contagious. Yeah. I followed all the same protocols as everybody else. Um, I'm not to blame here, which I'm fine with. I'm not looking for somebody to blame necessarily. Like, look, this thing is contagious and you can't blame somebody for catching it, especially if they're implementing all the CDC protocols. But what was interesting to me about it is that Yago Dora had more to say than the WSL By, as an entity. He had more to say twice. Um, and he had one, more to say than Eric Logan too. Yeah. Like, and by the way, it made me sympathetic towards Yago. Sure. Back to Ashley T's original email was like, just the fact that Yago came out and made a statement about it and and basically said, I did everything, like actually justified his behavior. I was sympathetic to him. Completely. I mean, I thought, so the reason I don't think that Yago is the typhoid Mary in this scenario is that uh, I just don't know when Elo and Yago would have hung out. Can you imagine them hanging out? Well, they're not going to be having a beer together, but they could absolutely cross paths in the event, in but, the competitors area. But something. from what I understand about the COVID, you have to be, you can't just be brushing by somebody. You have to actually be in their space for a minute to, or a few minutes in order to really get a good enough dose of the COVID to get it. They could have had a conversation about Yago's traveling. Elo could have been like, hey dude, what happened with those tests? And Yago explains to him. Ooh. Maybe Yago's would be very likely. Maybe Yago's typhoid Mary bringing the cove with him. A uh, wake of destruction. Um, where where do you think Eric Logan uh, isolated, self isolated, quarantined? I would imagine he's staying in a pretty uh, nice home location. Yeah. So do you think he would just had to go in his bedroom and sit in his bedroom for? I mean, still presumably it's it's, it's, he sit. should still be right. <laughs> I mean, you think it's not hasn't been ten days? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Lightly symptomed. So, um, which would indicate that the event can run Without, with him being remote. Yeah. Which he could have been since the beginning, <laughs> right? Um, it's really absurd. It's really so fun. I'm sad that people are going to stop talking about it quickly. Yeah, I'm sad too. that it's going to get brushed away because it really was a very, very, very comedic whole thing. In your... Uh, article about hope springing eternal when we heard rumors why by the way the wsl 
did not tell us with any advance notice about them turning on the event today. No. They literally announced it. It was like late last night. Eight hours maybe yeah. before the, they actually started running the event, which again is just a poor way to run the business. Like Get people excited. Get people, get people excited. Draw, know, yeah. Yeah, draw eyeballs towards your main business. Anyways, in your article about the rumor that they were going to be running on Thursday, did you publish that piece at 2 a.m. in the morning? No. When I got up and checked it at 6 a.m. this morning, it said that it was published four hours ago. Yeah, Derek might have gone in and changed uh, something or something like that. Uh, okay, got it. I don't it. think he did. Got it, but, got it. Yeah. Well, for listeners who are catching this episode today, there is well overhead, maybe double overhead, clean conditions today, Thursday. Looks like it's going to be smaller on Friday and Saturday. Could still be contestable, but there's going to be a big bump in swell on Sunday. Somebody told me that they would... Or somebody told me. Somebody posted in the Beach Creek comment section that it'll take two full days to run, and they have four days. I was trying to think. Do, only two days? If they're going to run women's, too? Well, I mean, women's is just they, a couple heats, but... Yeah, they probably didn't factor in the women's into that, but yeah, I think two full days could run it. You think you could, could complete it? I mean, we're only in the very first elimination round. The, it generally takes three and a half. Yeah. Okay. And they only ran one full day, so they would need two and a half days plus the women's would make three full days. So do, what, what's your call? Are they going to run today to the max, run tomorrow, and pick, then run I, the finals on Sunday? I would say pick the eyes out of it Friday, Saturday. Maybe run a few heats here and there. And then, yeah, have um, the bulk of Sunday swell to run the best heats in. Uh, and the, the conditions look good on Sunday, too, in terms of wind and everything. Is, is Sunday supposed to be better than today? Similar, I would say. Okay. Double overhead. Um, which will be interesting to see when they run the women's heats. Because, I mean, the waves are pumping. Yeah. I this mean, will be an ultimate... I mean, this will be a phenomenal test for the women. But as we've talked about, though, uh, the women left in the draw can all surf pipe. This is big, unruly pipe. I mean... I wouldn't I say it's unruly, but it's proper pipe. I don't know today's pipe, but if, if the swell dies tomorrow, for sure, Steph and Carissa and who else is left? Tyler? Tyler Wright for sure, Steph, Carissa, Sage, and she's doing battle with somebody in that final quarterfinal. Might be Tati. Okay, yeah, Tati. It is. But they can all surf pipe, I feel. Well, so honestly, I've seen them all surf back door. Yeah. I don't know that I've seen any of them fully go pipe. Yeah, fully get good waves at pipe. And this is a pipe swell right now. Mm. So it, it'll be challenging. But I think that you're right. They all are ready to take on the challenge, it'll be interesting to see who actually gets waves out there. It'll be a great storyline for the World Surf League to flub. Totally. Like the, <laughs> the, the girls at Pipe will be exciting. Um, one other thing that I was going to ask you about COVID that I can't remember right now. Uh, by the way, a bunch of people are arguing on Instagram about who cares? Like Brett Simpson, like, oh yeah, just run the event. Like, who cares? People got a cold. Uh, people got the flu. No big yeah. deal. Just run the event. You know, uh, I had. There's a local photographer in Newport Beach, Tom Kozad, who is uh, arguing with people. Actually, just setting them straight. I won't say arguing, but just setting people straight. And he said, "I've practiced inst or I'm sorry, I've practiced anesthesia for 27 years." We have 166 COVID patients in-house at the hospital. We had to shut down our OR because people had to move ICU patients into the area. Any and all staff being float is being directed to ER to help because it's a, there's an overwhelming amount of COVID patients. We have just formed a 24-hour intubation team, and we are sending patients to our sister hospitals because large medical center is maxed out. And if you need surgery or need to be seen in the ER for any reason with at all, good luck. Chances are you won't be able to accommodate you. Until you've been working your ass off in this environment, keep your conspiracy theories to yourself. Flu, this isn't. In another comment, he said, people are dying, but worse, the people that I see are now sentenced to life with numerous pathologies, kidney failure, dialysis being one big one. I don't want to argue here, but I will tell you firsthand that our healthcare system is currently overwhelmed and close to cracking. Be safe out there. Mm. So I think that, like, look, the reality is the media has kind of probably uh, made COVID seem a lot more life-threatening than it really is. But it 
it's not the flu and it is serious. And that even if you don't uh, die from it, you can end up with, we don't know, sure. but you can end up with lifelong illnesses or respiratory issues, even if you're healthy. That was another thing that he said in one of the comments was, hey, because somebody was like, hey, dude, it, I'm not a vulnerable age. I'm not worried about it. He goes, hey, I've seen young people. I've seen healthy people. I've seen everybody. And I've seen every version of it. Some people walk out of here with no problems at all, but you know there is a real risk here and we don't know how it all shakes out. So just be cautious. Ain't no joke. So I think that's important yeah. to, uh, to state. I mean, in anything like having... I don't know when, when you're so firm about your opinion, when you don't have all the facts and you know, don't know everything, yeah. it's odd to be so like, well, this is nothing. Exactly. But how, you know, what is that based on? Is it based on your real being out there and you know, okay, I've been everywhere. I've seen it all now and I can assess that this is nothing. Right. It just seems like I totally understand the, um, what, I don't know, being cynical, um, or wondering, but being real definitive, like this ain't nothing, right. to me seems, just, it's just unnecessary. The people who were that kind of set in their ways, Kozad didn't even comment, yeah. didn't even reply to, because you could see that. But, but that's the world we're living in, by the way, though. But to Brett, Brett Simpson's point, he was exactly right, though, in terms of come on, run the thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, there is a, yeah, okay, people got it. Isolate them. Wait your two days or whatever. I mean, I don't know how long you're supposed to wait you know, before yeah. you're clearly testing everybody a trillion times, test everybody a trillion times, more times and get it up and running as soon as possible while also updating the public about what you're doing to get it totally. up as soon as possible. The update was key. That was a big miss. Um, the other real unfortunate thing is that there was a pumping swell when they, when they had suspended the event. I mean, imagine so when you're imagine watching it was just, people, yeah. when you're like, Oh, the events often it's suspended because, and we have no idea what the updates are, but Nathan Florence just got a 12 point ride at yeah, backdoor. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right, Chaz, should we take a commercial break? Let's do it. All right, Chaz, welcome back. So good. Subscribers that give us five bucks a month didn't even have to listen to commercials there. You didn't even, yeah. They just you, rolled straight back into to the program. Just like us. Hey, couple of big injuries in surfing this week rabbit got bitten by a snake rabbit got bitten by a snake how how's that for a headline i mean my goodness it happens all the time rabbits i mean i would argue their biggest eaten by snakes all the time yeah it's one of their biggest predators Rabbit got bitten by a snake and has to like i think he had to go to the hospital and wait because they didn't know if it was poisonous or not right right which i was trying to think which kind of snake i mean did he just not get a good look at it it could have been this kind it could have been that kind is that the is that the issue? There? I guess. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Uh, Ronnie Blakey. Ooh, broke his leg. Broke his leg. I was, the great headline would have been breaks his leg at Snapper. Yeah, but it wasn't. I don't Snapped think. Snapped a leg at Snapper. Was it a Snapper or was, was it Akira? Kira? Yeah. It was it Kira. Ronnie blowing headlines. I think, no, but I think the headline, you should just run with that headline. Yeah. And then apologize later. The uh, Ron Blakey, not in Hawaii. Right. Look at that, getting He's hurt. Still part of the commentary team, though. Is, is. I did get that info. Yep. Uh, Julian Wilson got absolutely battered at pipe on one of the days that the event was suspended, pulled into this amazing wave that just kind of clamped, got compressed on his board, bust, knee busted his lip, split his lip, giant bruising, but obviously he made it through his heat this morning because Miguel Tudela got an even worse injury. Apparently. Man, and Miguel's so. looked... Bad. I, mean, I didn't even see it. I didn't like. He got just clamped too, so I don't know what happened, and yeah. I didn't listen to what they were saying. But I mean, he got fully put on the board and all that. Crazy. Yeah. Um. Well, best wishes to all those people. Yeah. Thanks for the great headlines. Stay but, safe out there. Um. I almost got bit by a snake one time. You ever encounter snakes in the wild? Sometimes. You have? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Kind of rattlers sometimes. Yeah, they're in Southern California, no. but if you're not out in the wild, you probably won't encounter them. You can go your whole life without encountering a snake in Southern California. Um, I was in Costa Rica, and I stepped out of the door of the place that I was staying, and it was nighttime, and I was, we had like a house and then a, a, a neighboring house, and we were going to go have dinner in the neighboring house. So I walked out of my door, and it was dark. There was no lights on the patio. I stepped on the doormat and dropped 
something, went to close the door and then turned on my phone light to see where I had dropped whatever I dropped. And there was a snake in between the doormat and the door. So I stepped over him. He was like, wasn't coiled up. He was like long, like he was slithering in between the doormat and the door when I happen to step out. So I'm standing on the doormat, closing the door, and he's between me and the door. Was he looking to bite you? No, but uh, he wasn't in like a position to bite. But I left, it was actually a fork that I dropped. I left the fork on the ground because I thought the fork could have triggered him. Like the fork landed right near him, obviously. Yeah. So he could have got bothered and then gotten in position. I could have got bit, but I... I looked at him and it it really like, it was a primal fear that came over me where I just like froze, backed up and just went, holy crap. And I walked back to the other house and I told them about it. And there was a couple of local guys in the house and they're like, well, what did it look like? And I'm like, I tried to explain it and they go, oh dude, that was a viper. They're like, you would have had to get hospitalized and Ooh. there is a ven there is a venom for it or an anti-venom for it. But it's important to know which snake bites you. Yeah. Like it, so, you, so you can get the right venom, antivenom. Yeah. yeah. Ideally, get a photo of it. Yeah. Because when you get to the hospital, which, by the way, the hospital's 30 minutes away on a dirt road. This is a great PSA. We're going to save somebody's life, just like we've saved many from cancer, from skin cancer. We are going to save somebody's life who gets bit by a snake because yeah. of your story. I mean, it. you don't Take think to pull out your phone when you get bit by a snake. You're obviously freaked out that you got bit by a snake. But in that moment, have a moment of calm. Take and picture. take the photo. Because when you get to the hospital, they will want to know. Fantastic information. Crazy. Rabbit didn't take a picture. Apparently not. Yeah, bummer for Hopefully him. he was able to describe it. Yes. Um, all right, Chaz, I think we should go out with barrel or not. Let's do it. Your passion for the Porsche really stimulated a lot of commentary on Instagram. Love a Porsche. So did your commentary about watches, by the way. Oh, yeah. I got tons of feedback about watches this week. Solid. Did, did you, are you closer to making a purchase? Hell no. <laughs> Somebody's like, uh, well, there's a bunch of things, but one guy was like, hey, dude, I know of a great shop in Orange County that sells used Rolexes if you're in the market. I was like, hell no. I am definitely not in the market for a Rolex. I gotta get married. I gotta have kids. I gotta send those kids to colleges. How like, there's no chance I'm spending money on a Rolex. Nobody's gonna respect you unless you have a Rolex. I'm not worried it's, about those people's it respect. It starts with the Rolex, and then you build up from there. You build your life on the foundation of a Rolex, David Lee Scales. I don't buy into anything that you're telling me right now. It's true. What about a fake Rolex? Nope. They won't even know. That's if all that I'm going for is their respect, no, it's not. I'd buy a fake one in Mexico. It's about self-respect, David Lee. It's so you I'm going to respect yourself. myself more if I have a Rolex? Yes. Huh. You're going to look down, you're going to check the time and think, I'm a man of worth. Huh. Yep. Trust I, me. I don't, yeah, my uh, values are set in such a way that I don't think I would feel that way if I had a Rolex on my watch. You will. Oh you'll, you'll walk a little bit taller. You'll voice your opinion more firmly. Hmm. Yeah. You okay. will not be part of the, have you heard the new thing about the, uh, white male mediocrity no. is the new buzzword. Yeah. What does that mean? It's a white male. It's the white male mediocre, mediocre industrial complex or something is the full thing, which is white men are just mediocre uh, and get pushed up through the ranks always by being mediocre. Like we're just a bunch of, we don't do nothing special. Is that is by, the by virtue theory. of just being a white male, you get all this, you get this. And therefore we're all, I think that it real, is true. But the real supposition is we're all just mediocre, which, again, I don't know about that part. That part's not necessarily true, but I agree that we have a greater sure. uh, opportunities in life just by the virtue of being a white male. For sure. In Southern California, particularly. Oh, yeah. um, well, so what if I that Rolex gets gifted to me? Will I still uh, take that self-value as my own even though i didn't earn that watch i mean you did earn it if it was gifted to you i mean somebody loves you enough and or okay. you're valuable enough to somebody for them to give you a rolex all right christmas is here i'm waiting I'm waiting you. for my self-esteem to get boosted I'm my self-worth you, you will breathe new air okay uh bear so back to the porsche yeah barrel or nah surfboard racks on a porsche nah i'm not i've Took the Porsches surfing often, both the 911 and the 
Panamera, and of course the Cayenne. I love just going through the Porsches. <laughs> the Porsches in my life. Which uh, should I take today to the yeah, beach? Which, which one? No, you fold, you fold down the passenger seat and you don't go... Yeah, you fold down the passenger seat as low as, low as it can go. You slide your board in there, even two. Your passenger, if there so happens to be one, sits in the back seat behind you. Boom, done. You don't wreck a Porsche with a surf wreck. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I. It's also just looks douchey. Yeah. It looks like I'm already driving this fancy car. Now I need you to know that I'm a surfer. Also, also, if you're a longboard on a Porsche, those two things do not go together to begin with. Oh my gosh. You need to be, you need to get on a high performance shortboard stat and then that'll go easily in the passenger seat. No mid lengths I, for I Porsches. We can, a blanket statement, if your board is longer than your car. Yeah, you've got a problem. That is problematic. And if you are a longboarder and a mid-lengther or whatever, an alternative, longer alternative craft rider, totally fine. Take the, your other car. If you have a Porsche, you certainly have another car. Take that car to the beach those yeah. days. Take the Believe day me. you drive your Porsche to the beach is the day you ride your high-performance shortboard. Fully agree. High-performance car, high-performance board. Yep. Uh there's also, I think the main key here though is the car is so beautifully designed. You don't want to wreck it with a wreck. You don't want to ugly it up, which is, by the way, the way I feel about my iPhone. I've never put a case on my iPhone oh. because the amount of in design work that went into this thing, it is so beautiful. The weight is perfect. The, the contours on it are perfect. It feels great. It looks great. To put an otter box on this thing is blasphemy. I mean, I don't think the iPhone is as beautiful. I just hate putting anything on it because I hate, like, the big case in the pocket is so annoying to me. Even to hold. I know. It's clunky. Mine is, mine is, all, ugly. Sh mine is all shattered up. But, yeah, I it's never put a case It's the price you pay for it. beauty. It's true. It's true. Design beauty. Don't okay. put, yeah. All right, so roof racks on a Porsche. No barrel. Heck no. Uh, this next one came from our uh, Floridian friend kevin miller kevin miller who was in costa rica i think wasn't he <sighs> recently kevin miller gets around that's right yeah that's right he invited us to bocas uh in january sweet if you want to go yeah definitely uh barrel or not putting a tribute or memorial of a deceased loved one on your rear v window of your car Ooh, i'm gonna go barrel i'm gonna go barrel are you really i am gonna go barrel uh I like it when I see it. It always makes me think. Anytime I see one, I read it and I think, huh. Just like that. That's what I, that's that what That doesn't I, feel like a good reaction. Well, I just wonder if the people in the car are sad. I wonder some other things that like that summed up mostly and huh. But it, it, it makes me pause, I will say. Which I, anything, anything in your life that makes you pause, I think is, has value. Have you ever felt a need to memorialize a loved, lost loved one with a sticker on your car? No, and I wouldn't. It's not a thing that I would think to do. Uh, but I do like them on other people's cars. See, I feel like it almost uh, devalues or denigrates their death in some way. What if, what I'm if... I'm to make a sticker about it but and let everybody on the freeway know about What if the sticker's on a Porsche? Even worse. Really? Again, you're muddying up the beauty of the design. You're now making people think about death when they see this beautiful car. Hmm. But it's the, it's the flip sides of the coin. I, I don't know. I don't, first of all, it's sad to me when I see that sticker. Yeah. And especially when you do the math of the years and you're like, God, they were 18 years old. That's what I'm saying though. That's exactly, precisely what I'm telling you. you no, I'm sad. Every single time you see one, you'll pause. I do the math too. You do the math. But if they're like 83 years old, you're like, sweet. Nobody puts the stickers <laughs> on 83. Could you imagine? It's like... <laughs> 1940 to 2020 <laughs> grandma lived a good life but we're gonna memorialize her on the back of the station wagon like what do you feel when you see like the roadside memorials like the flowers so sad yeah but it makes you pause it's the way that great great writers of old used to have skulls on their desks right they would hold the skull death always present I don't know, man. There's something so, to it. Is there anything sadder, by the way, than the roadside memorial that actually hasn't been kept up? Oh, yeah. That's you like you sad. saw it when they first put the flowers there and the candles, and now it's month six, and like everything's rotten, and they're like kind of 
strewn about because of the wind blowing it. Especially when they're fake flowers and they're like, just like totally sun bleached. Their family stops showing up and caring. Like yeah. what happened? Yeah. You know? I mean, if you got it, which is the good thing about the car sticker memorial, it doesn't take much tending. No, those stickers last. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're always, they're always pretty solid looking. Uh, I wonder if this is a bigger thing in Florida than it is here. Cause this came from Kevin and he's in Florida. I wonder if more people commemorate their death, family member's death on their car than they do here. Uh, it would I stand, see it occasionally here. Yeah. I see it. I see it every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Florida, yeah. So you're going barrel. I'm going barrel. Man, that's I'm going heck no. Makes me pause and think. Makes okay. me think about the temp, the temporary nature of life. We're at different phases in our life, so yeah. maybe you are just more um, sensitive, sensitive, introspective. Yeah. Got to make Chiz. <laughs> we got to make Chaz grit again. Yeah, it's true. It's totally we true. Got to make you so much more gritty. Uh, all right, final barrel or not? It's holidays. Be giving gifts. Gifting coupons. When you're a kid and you come up with a coupon book and you're like, back massage, I'll do the dishes, all that sort of stuff. No barrel. If Hemingway gave you a gift book of coupons. I would throw it in the trash and say, give me something real. That's no gift. Yeah. Right. No, I'm not a barrel on it because uh, rarely are those things cashed in. Never. The coupon is never redeemed. Where if the coupon was like, okay, sweet, go wash the car. Here you go. Uh, if it was actually workable, I'd be more into it. But even when I get like, uh, yeah, I mean, even as an adult, I've had that from time to time of an adult, I guess must've been a friend if they were giving me a gift. Uh, you know, giving, hey, Date nights on us next time or something like that. Never, it's never once been redeemed ever. No. Because never say, hey, remember that time you said, or remember that gift you gave of a gift to dinner and a movie? I'm to cash, cashing that in now. Exactly. Like if that's what you want to buy as an adult. Kids, okay, whatever. Kids, go for it. But if you're over seven, not, it's not allowed. I think I did it when I was a kid a couple of times. And I think that the real gift was the artwork. Yeah. Like putting effort into the design of this gift card coupon kind of a thing. Sure. Was maybe my parents like loved that. Uh, do, do, uh, intimate partners do this for one another? I mean, I feel that I think they do. I th and that's, and that's why I'm saying that's sensual massage. Awful idea. Friday night. Awful idea. Yeah. It's really dumb. Okay. You said that they don't get redeemed in terms of like, you never make good on the delivery of the thing. But I wonder if the coupon actually gets handed over. In the case that it does get redeemed, does the girlfriend give the dude the physical coupon? Be like, can you stamp this for me? Like, we need to make sure that this transaction is recorded. If that's the way you're doing it, then I would give more value to it. If, if there was an implicit understanding that this is the coupon, this is an official, like thing you can only use it once you know we have to rip it or stamp it when you turn it in he gets a hole puncher out yep. punches it goes to the filing cabinet under s for sensual massage files it away and there you go yeah i'll be barrel if it's that way if it's That'd like be a, hilarious. <laughs> if it's like a real proper really properly done treated i so don't admire that couple yeah no if you're keeping if you're keeping um a ledger. Sensual massage is such a sensual. Yeah. Massage. <laughs> uh, yeah. All massages are sensual yeah. as far as I'm concerned. I mean, yeah. If all right. Not, so doing it wrong. No barrel on that. Uh, no ultimately barrel. this conversation can include gift cards, but we already had that barrel and a year or two ago. Yep. Um, which I'm anti gift card giving. Was I pro? I think you were anti. Okay. We've done cash as one of them too. One time. Yeah. Uh, I'm anti gift card giving just because obviously it's not um, sentimental. Like you know, there's no thought put into it, but I got to the point with my brother where it's like, I give him a $40 gift card. He gives me a $40 gift. Like we're just ch exchanging $40 dollars at yeah. this point. Why not? You just keep it. Yeah. Your family, something it's thoughtful. What if somebody gave you a gift card for a Rolex? Do they do this? I'm sure you could buy a gift card from, I mean, for an amount from a Rolex store. Certainly from a store you could. Yeah. That'd be amazing if Rolex gate did gift cards themselves. That would be perfect. Give yeah. the give the gift card of a Rolex this Well, Christmas. listeners, 
heed Chad's advice. I'll send you my PO box if you're so inclined. Gift card. Um, all right, Chaz, great show. Album, thank you so much for hosting us in the middle of their move, too. So nice. Um, I'm kind of excited that the rest of the day I get to watch the Pipe Masters. Are you gonna Are you gonna put it on the phone? Do you put it on the phone on the dashboard when you're driving home? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. What if you crashed and were like really paralyzed from the neck down because you were watching professional surfing? That is very likely the way that I will go because um, I really... I don't advise anybody else doing it, but I do it every time there's a contest on. My argument for why I get away with it is I don't actually watch the contest. You just you listen to the sweet Mainly syrupy listen. sounds of Joseph Turpel. Mainly listen. Well, I mean the thing is if there's a wave that's caught, you know you're going to catch the replay. Exactly. So if you're merging and there's a wave caught, I absolutely won't look at the phone, but I'll know like you said 20 minute, 20 seconds later I'll be in the fast lane cruising and I could watch the replay. But the other thing is it's it's positioned in such a way in my car that I honestly barely have to move my eyes from the road down to down to the phone and people barely ride waves. That's true. I mean, in a 30 minute heat, there is 90 seconds of wave riding. The guarantee, you know, when somebody is going to ride a wave is when they cut to commercial and you see the person, I, pass. I still don't, it so baffles me how you can put those stupid things anywhere. You're not on a timeline. You're not, you know, you see somebody paddle, have the producer say, hold. Right. And then you could show the replay afterwards if you want. Right. You can watch, do the ride, go to commercial, and then have the replay. And do the inset during the commercial. There should be a little video inset of what's going on live. It is insane that they cut away, and they yeah. do it all the time. Yeah. Every contest, every heat probably, they yeah. cut away from one ride. I've been getting DMs this entire time from listeners commenting about the broadcast itself. Or that it's so um, wonderful. He was listen, somebody just said, said a, they heard a WSL commentator say that Adriana de Souza was from Sao Paulo, Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Can that be right? No, that can't be right. It's really funny if it is though. Yeah. Anyways, we'll be late to the news story by the yeah. time we record, by the way, next, uh, time that we record is scheduled for i feel the 23rd yes do you want to do it on the 23rd the let's, two days before christmas let's do it i'm down yeah it might be the 24th even. holiday holiday spirit let's yeah, do it let's christmas do it. eve okay sweet well Chaz, until christmas eve get barrel perfect